Hello everyone and welcome! If you've been following this channel for really any length of time, you've seen many instances of me transforming digital 3D CAD files into physical objects for various builds and projects. But what about going the other way and taking physical objects and transforming them into digital models? Well, today I'm going to be having a look at the Lynx 3D Scanner from 3D Maker Pro. This is a relatively low cost, larger format 3D scanner that promises some impressive abilities. I'll be putting this device to the test by involving it in a couple of simple projects, and I'll do my best to showcase what the scanner is capable of. While I'm certainly no expert when it comes to 3D scanners, I have used them in the past for reverse engineering and creating form-fitting parts, some of which I've showcased prior on this channel on various projects. I want to make it clear that if you're looking for a very technical overview or a direct comparison to other similarly priced scanners, this probably won't be the review for you, but if you'd like to see some practical uses of this device related to the RC hobby or other DIY projects, well stick around and join me as I see what I can do with the links. Let's go ahead and dive into this Link scanner from 3D Maker Pro. This optional premium version comes very nicely packed in a case, and inside you'll find various cables, the quick start manual, a tripod, and optional turntable included with this premium version, and of course the Lynx 3D scanner itself. Setting it up is very easy thanks to the included quick start manual and much more comprehensive manual found on their website. Just plug everything in, install some software as instructed from the manufacturer, and you're good to go. We went around the shop and acquired a variety of objects to scan, well over three dozen items at this point, but don't worry, I'm not going to make you sit here and watch every single scan. Instead, I'll provide a quick summary of what we found and how I think you can get the most out of this device. We quickly discovered that the scanner has a hard time scanning objects that are small or have darker colors. This is a relatively larger format scanner than what I'm used to. I'd say best suited for objects maybe roughly the size of a loaf of bread, up to like a small car or motorcycle. Most of what we scan here is smaller scale RC models and some pretty tiny parts, so many of these items are on the smaller range of what it seems the scanner is really designed for, if they can even be scanned at all. However, as an example, I did get a pretty good result scanning this 125th scale Shelby GT350 body. For being quite a bit smaller than what the scanner is really designed for, it looks pretty decent. It might be sufficient for modeling a well-fitting interior or roll cage, but it is certainly lacking some of the finer details. A good example of a smaller item being scanned, but overall it is really tuned for larger objects such as this full-size alloy wheel. Now this is just a really quick scan, just focused on capturing the face of the wheel, and this turned out looking pretty good. This wheel contains a mix of some shiny reflective parts while the center is painted black, but it captured it overall quite well. This just so happens to be a wheel design that I've already created a 125th scale version of from reference photos, but talk about a great reference for designing a smaller scale wheel. You wouldn't even have to take the wheel or tire off of the vehicle. Just 20 seconds of scanning the face of the wheel in one go, import the mesh into your CAD program, maybe touch it up a bit, scale it down, and you've got a perfect reference for reproducing the shape and details onto a wheel designed for a RC model. Now, of course, with any scanner, there are going to be some limitations. This fan is a good example of that. This was just a quick single pass scan, and the body of the fan turned out looking pretty good. A few holes, but again, this was just a quick single pass. The grade and the blades, however, are not really present, just too thin to really capture well. It's worth mentioning that there is definitely a learning curve to 3D scanning, seemingly especially with more budget price scanners such as this Lynx. For the best results, you're going to want to invest some time into prepping the object you're scanning for a better final result. This could include applying some gray primer, which shows up very well, but there are of course less permanent options such as using a 3D scanning spray or a dusting of cornstarch. The software, which I have downloaded onto a Windows 10 PC, is very basic and overall quite easy to use. It's not perfect by any means, but it's probably sufficient for a lot of hobbyists. We did find that the software often seemed to have some trouble aligning multiple scans, even when seemingly there is more than enough overlap. As you scan an object, it may be hard to reach certain parts of it, 
so you may need to stop the scan, reposition the object, and begin scanning again. The software should then align both scans as long as there is enough overlap. However, on many occasions, the software seemed to be unable to automatically align the scans even when there was a large amount of overlap. Sometimes it works, don't get me wrong, and of course some objects, such as those with a lot of rotational symmetry, will just be more difficult for any software to align, but I ended up just exporting some of the scans into MeshLab, a free open source software option, and I was able to align those scans no problem when the software simply couldn't. Fortunately, there is an option to manually align the scans if needed. Not always ideal though, so we really tried to do as much as we could with a single scan. The turntable is a nice inclusion and is ideal for scanning smaller parts on a tabletop. Unfortunately, ours stopped working about one hour into testing. Even before that, right out of the box, it started turning really slow. So slow that it couldn't rotate the full 360 degrees before the table scan function would complete. As far as I can tell, this scanner doesn't control or know the position of the turntable like on some other 3D scanners. The turntable just spins the moment it's plugged in. Now fortunately, I can achieve the same effect and get the same quality scan by hand or using a Lazy Susan, but of course it's no longer an automated process. I'm sure ours just happened to be a dud, though in all honesty, it does feel kind of cheap. Fortunately, the Link scanner itself feels much better put together and has given us no issues. Now this is a feature I've never really needed, but you can scan an object and capture the texture or appearance of the object as you can see here. It'll create an image and a .mtl file for the texture of the object, in this case a box. It appears the links can only do this in black and white, however. No color texture option appears to be available, as far as I can tell. Overall, quite impressive considering the price. I feel like with some experience getting to know this device and a willingness to prep any difficult objects you'd like to scan, this can be a real asset for a wide variety of projects, but certainly not for those who will exclusively be scanning smaller objects. I've got two very simple projects that I'll be utilizing the scanner for. The first is I'd like to add an old school looking visor to the cab of this Rock Hobby Magnum. Of course that part could be scratch built, but conforming it to the curvature of the cab would be a bit difficult, and designing this part digitally takes less time, ensures exact symmetry, and I can 3D print unlimited replacements, and of course share the STL file with all of you if you'd like to print one at home. I simply scanned the body with the links, and although this body is a bit on the small size of what the scanner can do, what I have here is sufficient. If I wanted a better fitting part and therefore needed greater accuracy, I would need to use one of our other scanners to really capture the details, such as the drip rails over the doors. We're a little out of the recommended size range on this scanner, but this is just sort of a quick and dirty demonstration, if you will. If I was designing the same part for a full-size truck, no doubt the scanner would have all of the detail needed. It's just on this smaller 118th scale body, it can't quite capture those tiny edges, though there's enough here and it's accurate enough to be usable. Here's what I've got, a nice little visor and it should conform to the body very well. Let's send that to the print queue. So another quick project is I got a quick scan of the FMS Smasher monster truck and I want to create a simple engine piece, making it look like part of the engine is sticking out through the hood, kind of like what you see here. This is a 124 scale body, so it's really pushing the limits of how small of an object can be scanned with any significant amount of detail, however it captured it well enough. The hood might look flat, but if you look closely there is some subtle curvature to it. Very rarely on a car body will there ever be a perfectly flat surface, usually there's at least a little bit of curvature to it. This again is a super simple project, the scanner really isn't even essential with something this simple, but you can imagine if I was designing something more complex, like a full body kit, a custom chassis, maybe a new front end that I want to graft onto the rest of the body, at that point a good 3D scan is really going to be useful. This is just a quick and simple way to show how these scans can be used to aid in creating custom parts. Now as I get these parts 3D printed and showcase them on the trucks, one thing I thought would be cool would be to do a full body scan or even just a head bust and use that to make a custom driver figure. However, I couldn't get my hair to scan. Everything else scanned just fine, but I think I need to try putting some powder or something easily washable in my hair to see if it can capture it. 
so stay tuned if that's something you think would be interesting. By the way, I have posted the STL files on our Patreon page for anyone who'd like to 3D print these parts for themselves. If you're a hobbyist looking to get into handheld 3D scanning without spending a ton of money and want to scan well-suited objects, mainly 20 centimeters to several meters in size, this seems like a nice option. I can see many uses from scanning larger RC bodies to digitizing clay sculptures or scanning an actual car body, but I think it's important to recognize this product's limitations. Smaller items, shiny or transparent items, or dark colored items will be difficult if not impossible to capture. We really like the ease of setup and use, storage case, fast scan times, and scan quality under optimal conditions. But we're less impressed with the quality of the turntable and some of the limitations with the software. I want to point out that there is a mobile app available that allows you to use this device with a phone or tablet, and there is also a battery attachment eliminating the need to have the scanner plugged into the wall, so that would give you a completely portable option when using the scanner. That could certainly come in handy for certain applications, so I figured I'd point that out. I hope you all enjoyed this look at the Lynx 3D scanner and found the information helpful. I'm looking forward to messing around with it some more and seeing what kinds of objects I can digitize. If you're interested in ordering one of these for yourself or would like some additional information, I have included some links below in the description. As always, thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you next time.